the Kepler Space Telescope. Kepler's mission is to detect planets outside our solar system that roughly have the same size, conditions, and distance from their stars as Earth, theoretically. We think the probability of finding extraterrestrial life would be best on Earth-like planets. And from previous observations, we know of approximately 330 extrasolar planets. From ground-based observations, we know that Earth-like planets could be there. And if you have some Earth and you have some prebiotic soup, comets that bring in the organic chemicals, something could be growing on these planets. Perhaps. You might not always end up with dinosaurs or cavemen, but there could be some planets out there that could have some primitive life. Proteins, amino acids, sugars, the same sort of things that can be made on the surface of a comet by hitting it with ultraviolet light. Also water, energy, time, perhaps a clay-like surface on the planet. The military radar leaving our planet is probably the strongest signal from our planet. If any others are out there looking for us in space, they could pick up the radar. Now, most of the big ground-based radar radio telescopes are trying to detect life rather than beam out our presence. In fact, there's an act active argument within the extraterrestrial intelligence community as to whether we should be announcing that we're here instead of just listening quietly. But that's associated with worrying about aliens, aliens coming to enslave us and kill us. Some people think we should just stay quiet. The speed of light is so fast and distances are so immense between stars that there's very little probability that anybody could come here to invade anytime soon. They say traveling between stars is pretty much a territory of science fiction and with our current best rockets it would take us 100,000 years to reach the closest star system. Anyway, the Kepler Space Telescope is supposed to search for extrasolar planets by gravitational lensing. But if they do find any Earth-sized planets so far away, many light years away, how are you going to know if there's anything living there? Well, you can't really go there to see. What's the use of it? NASA has these mission competitions where 30 or 40 ideas compete against one another for one or two launching slots. The thing is like a horse race where people are throwing rocks and the jockeys are elbowing each other. Scientists can be very competitive. They are not afraid to point out flaws in other people's projects. The Kepler telescope got shot down two or three times. Anyway, the central idea for Kepler was to find Earth-like planets by measuring the decrease in brightness of a star when a planet passes in front of it. The competing scientists keep saying you can't measure such a tiny change. But a planetary scientist showed that the same device that we use in digital cameras could do the job. In fact, 
The Kepler Space Telescope is just a gigantic digital camera hurtling through space. It's also a much more capable camera than a similar one that the French launched two years earlier, which is designed to do other things. Always a dark horse in the race, Kepler got its boost when some of the front-running projects were eliminated. So now it's up there, and before the year is out, it's going to be looking for other worlds. And if they do find another world out in space somewhere, or in this galaxy, or wherever, like I say, if you can determine that it's actually there, how are you going to know what's on it? How are you going to know if there's any life there? You're not really going to be able to see the planet. You're just going to be able to infer or to deduce or assume that there's a planet there. Because even the nearest solar system is approximately four and a half light years away. The speed of light is approximately 186,000 miles per second. Even if you could go that fast, it would take four and a half years just to get there. Well, and many others are much further, many, many light years away. So, what's the use? Isn't it more like a waste of money to be looking for other Earth-like planets when we can't even take care of the one we have? Perhaps they should have spent the money, yes, on trying to save the planet Earth from the climate change, global warming, whatever have you call it and all the other problems that we have on this planet. This planet is our home. Yes, it is the most important planet that we know. So yes, you can look for all the other planets that you want to way out there in space somewhere. But it does no, absolutely no good. It's, uh, liking, it's likened to a fantasy. A waste of money, some kind of way. Anyway, Yes, they're looking for other worlds out in space. But how are they going to know when they actually find one? And again, something bigger going on here. Something much more. And all these are signs of the end times. Transition days. Transition is still happening. Ongoing. Every day. All around the planet Earth.